but I couldn't go because it was some deeper sh going on at that award show. What do you mean? Like once I got in the car with my manager at the time who went to the award show and he was like, that wasn't an award show. We literally just went to an Illuminati meeting. <laughs> blog in the universe today we got a very special guest for the second time on the mile high mini cam man ox dior what's the work what's the word yeah it's, it's been a minute in fact it's been like what three four years now i was watching that old interview was, <sighs> it's yeah. been like four or five now Facts. that shit that was 2019 yeah, it's been i think minute. i was like 19 when i should drop hell yeah it was my first serious interview i feel like yeah. i just did interviews and shit but yeah, I seen the one you did with uh, Banana Clip. That was dope. That was more like vibe, laid back. Yeah. You were, were you in LA. Cali for that one? I was in LA at um the writer I was signed to his crib. You know, we was on the brink of a lot of. Shit. I just got signed like that. Hell yeah! All right, well, uh, we'll kind of do like a quick back take as far as like you coming up and like. Growing up in Colorado, stuff like that for the people that are getting introduced to you. So, originally from Aurora, correct? I'm originally from Denver. Okay. Yeah. I lived in Aurora for half my life, though. So, I grew up in Aurora, but I was born in Denver. Do you claim, like, more of, like, Aurora or Denver? Would you, or both? Just don't really matter. It don't matter. I claim CL. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely claim Denver, but I got love for Aurora, too. You know, oh yeah, that's where I made the most noises in Aurora. And you went to Overland, mm -hmm. all four years. Nah, I went to um. I really got on the rap sheet at Central. Mm -hmm. I went to Aurora Central, and then I went to Grandview, and then I went to. I graduated from Overland and shit. Okay, what year? Um, twenty eighteen. So you been to, you went to a couple Aurora high schools and shit. Yeah, I went to Central for like a year. It was a badass school, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I was like, there I was super turned, you feel me? That's where I got my name, you know, started rapping and shit. And then I got a scholarship opportunity and shit. And then I went to um, Grandview for a year, but I also wanted to rap. So I went back to Central and then that school was too bad. So I went to Overland. What, you say you got a scholarship, was it for like, like arts or it was, what was it? It was just cause like, I wasn't always a good kid, but I was always a smart kid and shit. So, you know, they they had opportunities for kids that was smart to join this scholarship program called Boys Hope, Girls Hope, and, shit, mm. and you would move and go to all different school and shit. So, did you like? Did your parents want you to go to a better school? Or? My parents didn't care long as I graduated and went to college, but me, I knew I wasn't learning shit, so. I wanted to actually be somewhere I learned, you know, and had opportunity. What was your uh, relationship like with uh, your parents? My dad, he he left when I was a young nigga, you know. He was addicted to drugs and, and my mom was working all the time. Mm -hmm. So I was hustling like at a young age. I had three sisters and I just had to hustle. I always wanted the new We couldn't afford the new so I found a way to get the new that's real, okay. So you, but you started rapping in high school, like at Aurora Central, you said? I started rapping when I was a kid. I started rapping when I was like a toddler, for real. And I recorded my first song when I was like 10 or 11. But I was like, this rap shit's a joke. Like, I didn't think it was an opportunity. And then I got in high school and people seen it in me, for real. You're in high school, but you had started rap earlier. When would you say it was like, when you started actually taking it serious or, you know what I'm saying? Like dropping music and stuff like that. So, my family went through some shit where we lost our crib and I lived with my cousins and we'd be freestyling like a And one of my cousins would be dropping shit on SoundCloud. So I'd be dropping freestyles on SoundCloud when I was like 12, 13 mm -hmm. and then I wasn't serious though, I just loved to rap. I got to high school, I got in this class, it was like um, 
a class for suicide prevention and shit. And niggas knew I could rap because I'd be rapping at like recess and shit. And they forced me to be on this music project. You feel me? Like we was doing a project that was like, let's do a music project about suicide prevention. That was like, Ox mm -hmm. Israel should do it. And I joined this group. I was a freshman in this group of seniors that was like a rap group. And they was like bringing me to the studio at college campuses and shit. And they was like, you should rap for real. Like you should be serious with this shit. And then they was like, you should change your alias. And that's how I came up with Ice Dealer and shit. And then I just took it serious from there. Once I joined the scholarship program and went to Grandview and shit, that's when I really started to take it serious. Cause I'm like, I'm finna go to college and shit. They want to force me to do certain shit, learn about certain shit. And I was like, nah, I love this music shit. And also my freshman year, I had a teacher, a writing teacher. He was into the music shit heavy. Mm -hmm. So we would stay after school with me and my boy, and we would just learn about hip hop. He would put us on everything. The teacher head. was into hip hop? That's dope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We would pull up to his crib. We'd rap. He'd rap with us. You pull it was crazy as shit. You pull up to the teacher's crib, or? I pull up to my teacher's crib. We watch <laughs> games and shit, <laughs> and he would just be like, helping me write rhymes. He wouldn't help me, but. Was he like, did he make music too, before? Or? Yeah, he made, he was, he didn't make music, he was a poet. Mm. So like, he made poetry, and spoken word and shit. So, he put us on all that deep shit, conscious shit, shit he like He was more that. into like the lyrical. Yeah, conscious. when I started out, I was super, super lyrical on the conscious shit. You kind of hear that in like the, the this song too, Loki. Like, yeah, it's the, almost kind of gives you that like that new like East Coast vibe type shit. Yeah, like, yeah. definitely. We listen to a lot of East Coast shit, and he just put me up on game. Okay, so I think we did talk about this in the last interview, but now reflecting back on the it was called three hundred three. Confrontation. Right. Looking back on that, how do you feel like uh, it was? And I'm I'm open to asking about it because it wasn't like uh, like there's certain diss songs that are like really street beef oriented. I'm like I'm gonna stay away from that. I ain't trying yeah. To, but this was more like the rap, like it was a, a sport type thing. So like, talk about that and like how that boosted your career and how you look at it now looking back. It was like some Kendrick control type shit where mm -hmm. you just go at everybody. I had dropped a song. I had started going to this studio called YGAM. Yeah, I remember that. And um, everybody would be rapping there. And niggas would be talking shit about everybody. And I was just like, y'all niggas talk more than y'all rap. And it was one of the moments, like, I was hearing about Rand Steez. I was hearing Trey Rich had just got signed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, niggas is not really rapping right now. You feel me? Like, at that point, today, everybody's rapping, especially yeah. in Denver. But right. at that point, it was like seven rappers. Right, right, yeah. So, it wasn't a lot of people to talk about, and it wasn't a lot of people to listen to or even look at, because nobody was taking Colorado serious with the music. Right. So, it was just one of those moments, like, I'm going to make them take it serious. And That's real. I really took a risk, because nobody knew who the I was, I was a kid, I was 15, 16 years old, but that shit changed everything, I feel like, especially for me, like, the next day I went to school, it wasn't even the same, I had, like, a mob of kids around me, the shit was different. You about any shit, like... Yeah, I remember when I first dropped the disc, for, like, the first two hours, everybody was talking shit, like, who the fuck is this kid, yeah. he sound like a little ass kid. On, like, Facebook and stuff, or what? Yeah. Everybody, like, they fan bases was dissing me because all of them were established. Rand Steves was doing shows. Trevish was doing shows. Um, the Ape had just dropped. His shit had, like, 70K views. Shit was turned. Yeah, I was going to say, who else did you diss? Because I do remember those those two. You said the Ape and there were some others, too, or no? Or was it just the Ape, Trev, Rand Steves. That's all I remember. Yeah. But I remember at that time, like, that's kind of when I first started getting into hip-hop. Yeah. Or, like, the Colorado hip-hop scene. And Rand Steez was definitely, like, definitely going to get He was the biggest. Yeah. 
He had that bathing apes and like the dumb stuff. Trap. Yeah. You ain't lying. And that's that's real that you say that because I mean now, I feel like a lot of people kind of overlook Steez and like what he, he especially for like the underground scene and shit. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's hella known, but like I feel like a lot of the mainstream rappers and shit kind of overlook him and what he's. He switched his sound. Though. Yeah, he did. He's very versatile now. Yeah. Like, I feel like at that time he was like there was Flatbush Zombies and right. Suicide Boys and Lil Peep and shit. Right. Lil Peep, all that was going around so it was like kind of sad boy rap right. but conscious in a way. Right. And he was on that and then he kind of switched it. He made turn shit conscious shit. Would you ever do um, have you done any work with Steez or Trev or anything? Me and Steez talked about it but Nah. Never ended up I did some shit with Trev though. Trev used to throw these sessions where it'd be everybody in there, AP, Doobie, and I did a song with Echo Sean. I did one song with Trev, but I don't know if it's out. But yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, Sean was definitely going crazy too. He he definitely. <sighs> he used to pull up to the studio and play dice and shit. That was my boy. Hell oh, yeah. Okay, so. All that happens, you're getting a lot of buzz in the city, you know what I'm saying? When did you start, like, going out of state and, like, taking the music more serious in in that way? You know what I'm saying? Like, really trying to, um, I guess, get out of here, you know? Like, really put on for the box and shit. It was never my intention to get out of state. But my senior year, I had got offered a deal. And that was when I chose, um, I was in between scholarship, go to school for fashion or rap. And at the time I'm leaving school, going to the studio. I'm in the studio at all times. Like I'm engineering half the city and I got offered this deal and I went to Miami and the deal turned out to be a bullshit deal, but I seen damn, if I get out of here, I could do way more than I could do here. You feel me? And that was the first taste. I came back for a year, switched studios. I engineered that new wave sound with Russ, Russ Anthony for like a year. And um, that's when I had hella people just telling me, bro, you gotta go. Like you gotta go network somewhere else. LA, Atlanta, Florida, New York, and then I started getting money with a couple of people in New York and um, they came out here. I did a session for them. I played them some music. And after I played them some music, they was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, what are you doing here, bro? <laughs> yeah, if you want to, if you want to do this shit, you got to go to Cali. And then so I went to Cali when I was like 19. I went out there for a month and shit was turned. Like, yeah. we was in studios. Every lift we got in, my boy would play my shit. And they'd be like, what the f***? Like, where are you from? And from there, I just kept going out of state. I'd go back and forth until I finally decided, like, f*** it. I'm going to stay in L.A. for a minute. So when you went out of state and people asked you, like, where you're from, would you be kind of proud to say I'm from Denver? Yeah. Or was it like, like, people going to feel, think a certain way if I say I'm from Denver? Or, like, how was it? I felt like Denver was my selling point because... It was unique? Yeah. Nobody out there was from Denver. Like, I never ran into Denver artists in L.A. until I got deeper. But even then, like, even when I got in the industry doors, like, I wasn't running into niggas from Denver. Right. And then you you say you have to choose between a deal and uh, college. What were, like, the options as far as college? And then what, like, what were the deal? Or what was the deal? Who was it with? What were kind of, like, the... What made you realize it was a bullshit deal, I suppose? My first deal was a bullshit deal because it was a 360 and it was a buyout contract. So I was signed to this nigga. He would manage me, give me a major deal. And then whatever the major deal, he set his buyout amount. So he could take most of the deal. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really care. I was like, nigga, this is an opportunity to blow. Right. But the person I was signed to was like, you got potential, like, don't take that. At the time, I got offered $20,000 scholarship to whatever school I wanted to go to, and then I was at Overland, 
and I had a full ride fashion scholarship from S F C C L A. So I'm assuming it's like fashion college of LA. Yeah. Like that. At that time I'm like I'm looking at what's right in front of me. I'm on my phone on Instagram. I'm like, niggas is doing fashion from the crib, like blowing up from the crib, like this is not like something you gotta here? go to. in like general that. around yeah. the world. I'm like, this is not something you gotta go to school for if you know how to do it. You just gotta build the following. I'm like, I'll build the following in music. Then do the fashion after. So that was kind of the route I was thinking. Okay. And was that like your only deal that you were offered or like what other deals have you seen or like turn like in general I guess what's your experience with like label deals and stuff like that and are you currently signed are you independent like what what are you doing currently I got a management deal right now um just management um with a manager in LA later down the road I signed a production deal to Jazzy she's a songwriter she wrote Lemonade she wrote I think it's called Old Town Road, or what's the song? The one by Nas? Yeah, Lil Nas X, she wrote hella shit. Yeah, Lil Nas, not Nas, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so I signed a production deal to her later down the road, and that's when I did Rolling Loud. I did help to write for Hella Nick. Met Hella Nick. That's how I met Diddy and a bunch of other shit. So, yeah, I signed to her for a year. Didn't go. As planned. As planned, yeah. you know. Um, and then I fought my way out of that deal. Did the independent for like a year. And then to this point, signed my management deal. And now I'm independent pretty much. You said it was a writing deal or? It's a production deal. Production deal, okay. So and it's pretty much a deal where they get you. They get you in with all the fire producers and they pretty much build you up to a major deal. And they pretty much take the credit for helping you get a major deal. Okay. And then you said you performed at Rolling Loud? or Yeah. And was that the one in L.A., Miami? Miami. Okay. What was that experience like? Crazy. I brought K-Baby with me. It was on Jazzy set. Shit like that. It was nuts. I met hella niggas, Lil Yachty, Rari, a few other niggas. Hell yeah. So, you're performing at Rolling Loud. You're starting to build these connections in yeah. L.A. And you said that's when you met Diddy? Yeah, How a little bit after I met Diddy. At the time I was doing, at the time I was signing to um, Jazzy, I had been working with Cardo Got Wings. Mm, he's, he's from here, actually. Yeah. Well, at least he spent time out here. I don't know for sure. Like, Nah, he's mm -hmm. from, I don't know where he's from. He went to high school out here, though. He went yeah. to Rangeview. Right. And he's pretty familiar with Colorado. He just got into some trouble out here and moved to Texas. Yeah. I remember we posted it about him, uh, like he made a quote about Colorado, how he like didn't mess with because there's a lot of haters or something, which yeah. is understandable. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of people get out of Colorado because they we got like two, three multi platinum producers, right. and one of the biggest niggas in the music industry is from My Colorado. Brother. The dude with that uh, the CEO at Sony, John Platt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jazzy would be with John Platt all the time. Yeah, there's people be surprised like when you behind the scenes like how much is actually how many people are from here. But yeah, I was at the Denver Public Library yesterday or a few days ago, and I seen so many niggas just from here. Don Cheeto, an uh, actor. Do you um, do you think that? Cause I I be talking to people about this and like I get mixed signals about it. Do mm -hmm. you think that those people like owe anything to Denver and like should sign some artists or is it like they don't owe anyone anything out here and they, people, the artists just need to work harder. What's your opinion on I this? think they had to leave to do what they had to do. So Fair. I don't think they owe Denver anything. Me personally, I feel like everything I did was embedded to Denver. But Trev even told me in a conversation, he was like, do this shit for you. Right. And I was like, doing it for me is doing it for the city. So right. everybody has their different opinions, different entitlement. Me personally, I feel like coming from here, I want to give the opportunity to be greater. But not everybody has that right. in their mindset. No, that's real. So how did you end up meeting Diddy? So when I signed to Jazzy, that's when we really locked in. And 
I would go live at her crib for a little bit. Like for month stretches. We I'd go stay over there for like three months. When In I LA? first Yeah, when I first signed to her. The first day I went over there, she was like, one of the these this is gonna be one of them nights. And I guess it was Gunner's birthday. Mm. And Diddy was throwing an after party, so I'm nervous as f I'm like she all these celebrities and shit like Yeah, I'm like, bro, this is my first time really being around the lit, like the turn, the industry. Hmm. So we went to Gunner's birthday party. Future was there. Normani was there. Everybody in the industry was there. Diddy Sons, all the baddest in LA. I'm like, like, I'm from Colorado. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a normal yeah. kid, gang. Like, I was just downtown, like, nuts. Meeting all these people, shit's crazy. Like at one point, Gunna's like birthday party ended, but there was an after party like at the top floor or something. So everybody's leaving the birthday party, fighting to get into the next party. It's crowding the elevators, crowded in the lobby. Chris Brown runs up to Jazzy, says what's up. I mean Chris Brown. That was probably my second time meeting Chris Brown. Chris Brown loved Jazzy, so I would see him all the time. So then, it ends up being too packed, so now we're going to Diddy's birthday party, or not his birthday party, but after party or whatever. So there was two parties going on after, and one was like after the gun party, and then one was somewhere else, at, yeah. and that was Diddy's party? Yeah. Okay. So we get in the Uber, we bring like two from the party, and we're in there with like one of Diddy's sons and shit. Then we had to Diddy's crib. So at first I was nervous. Now I'm really nervous because I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. He's Diddy. Because at this the time. Who, you know, put Biggie on him. Like, yeah, at this time he's looked at in the light of a uh, hip hop goat. Like, right. So we start heading to his crib. I'm nervous as fuck. She's like, I'm going to introduce you to Diddy tonight. Like, it's up. Like, we locked in. So we walk, we get to his crib. It's a line outside. We skip the line. We walk in the first house, because at Diddy's house, he got three houses. Is this it's the like, one in L.A.? Or, yeah. Okay. He got three houses. The first house, biggest And then he got two big ass houses in the back. One's the party house, one's the guest house. So we walk through the crib, crazy, and I'm like, oh, shit. Is this, like, in Beverly Hills or something? Or, like, I don't, I've like, been in L.A. once, so I don't even know what, what neighborhoods and what and stuff. It, I, it might be Bel Air or... Beverly Hills. Just one of the like really rich. It's really rich though. Yeah. Like when you drive down the street, everybody's yeah, house is covered cool. like by gardens and, yeah. and like trees. You can't even see the house. So we walk through the house and then we head to the party house. The party house, as soon as you walk in, you go upstairs, it's all red. Like you could tell it's like a crazy vibe in there. Mm. So we walk in, I'm nervous as shit. Like, I get nervous to talk because it's like, sheesh, just remembering the moment. We walk in, and then Diddy's just standing right there. Everybody's in there, though. Party Next Door, Joey Badass, Tiana Taylor. Everybody was in that. And then I walk in, and she's like, yo, Diddy, this is my new artist, uh, Ox Dior. He out of here. And then I shake his hand, and I'm just like, Yeah. <laughs> like, just like, like some shit out of a dream. So it sounds like a, a dream, did it? Like, yeah, something you would dream of, and it just especially like, bro. I've been listening to Joey Badass since I was like twelve. Yeah. So I walk in, I'm nervous as f everybody dancing, standing up, and shit. I just sit on the couch, light up a joint, chilling. Next thing I know, Joey Badass comes sitting next to me. Party next door comes sit next to me. Diddy comes sit next to me. Diddy light up a joint. We just sit in there and like, at Diddy party, he be the main attraction. So right. at this His point, everybody sure. looking at me and Diddy just sitting on the couch like, who is Diddy sitting by? And then um, we was just chilling. I remember him snapping his fingers. He snapped his fingers in a bad Asian just got on the table, start twerking. Like, what the? F 
crazy shit yeah. where I'm just like, yo, this is my moment right here. Like, I'm just sitting here and just enjoy this moment. moment. Once he do that, started twerking in front of him. Start twerking in front of me. And I'm like, oh no, do I smack you or what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like yeah. nervous, you don't you, I'm nervous. Do I right. just go with the flow? Yeah, cool and you Yeah, and act too cool or party. Right. I ended up I was just chilling, you feel me? And then I started talking to Joey. And I'm talking to him about, like, at this point, he had dropped the album in years, went on tour. And I'm just telling him, like, bro, I've been listening to your ass since I was a kid. Like, mm. I'm the youngest here, bro. And I come from the middle of nowhere. Right. But I want to let you know, like, the acting shit you got, that's on lock. But the music is what, you, what got you here. And, like, don't ever forget that. Telling him that. He telling me, like, bro, you the youngest. Here, so what you should do is soak up all this game, bro, and just enjoy this moment because a lot of niggas don't ever get to experience this. Shit. I'm like, geez. So from there, they just start playing hella unreleased music. They everybody's dancing, just playing unreleased hits. And I'm like, Whoa. from like Diddy or like all the artists there? Diddy, Bryson Tiller. Everything you could think of. Joey, Nipsey, everything. That's crazy. I'm just sitting there in awe. The party ends up getting crashed because we start fighting. Because one thing about those type of parties is it's all rich in the party. Mm. So don't give a fuck. They fucking with whoever. They hop in the next. All type. We stayed till the party was pretty much over. And then Jazzy was signed to Diddy, so they was doing business. And, and I just ended up chilling with Diddy's sons. And that was the first time I went to Diddy's party, but I went to like two or three Diddy parties. I didn't see nothing crazy, but you could tell with the vibe that was in there that it was a anything goes vibe. So you when, never know. When you say anything goes, just like. Anything goes doing whatever doing whatever you just enjoy the vibe or be part of it that's fair so did you get a chance to like i know you said that uh jazzy that's how you say jazzy she, jazzy? Mm -hmm. she introduced you to did you get a chance to talk to diddy or like did you guys have any conversations or was it kind of just chilling like he's just chilling right next to you and you're just kind of in all types of, like when diddy party he don't do a lot of talking he just does shit. Like, he tells us what to play, tells us what to do. You feel me? I just tried to stay out of the way at that party because I'm like, Yo, it's my time, first yeah. time in Hollywood. So, yeah. I ain't really say too much to Diddy because I'm also. Jazzy signed to Diddy. So, and I was signed to Jazzy, so. I wasn't trying to get in the way of anything. Right, right. you let it naturally play my part. Right, right. So that was the first party. It ended. You just bounced, and oh uh, yeah, that was that. I stayed and kicked it, talked to his sons for a bit. Me and Christian was hella cool and shit like that. We stayed after for a little bit, and then we dipped out. And that was my first experience. I remember being there just texting my family like, "I just met Diddy. Yeah. It's up." Like. What I'm out saying? of here. What, were they like proud of you? Were they just? What were they nah, proud? like family. My family never really supported my music. So my one of my sisters does heavily, but they never expected no shit like that. So it was like whatever. At that point, it's like okay, get the job done. Right. So what was your experience with? You said you went to two or three. What was your experience like with the other ones? Okay, so the second one, I got more faded. So I was more in the vibe. You were a little more chill because you were, okay, now I kind of know. Yeah, Diddy talked a lot more because he presented a cake to his son. Mm. Was um, it their birthday or something? Yeah. Okay. Um, this time I actually spoke to Diddy, but it wasn't no extra shit. It was just like, 
I don't know, like, how, how do you how encompass do you this? How do you get to this point? Like, and he's just saying work hard, like stand on your 10, like be a man, be demanding, uh, be decisive, things like that, like dropping gems on me. And um, at this party, I was starting to get deeper in the industry. So Jazzy would tell me to be like, more social mm -hmm. network. I hate when people tell me that. I'm like, oh, I'm just chilling. Like, I'm like, bro, all these <laughs> is rich as f yeah, Like, yeah. they don't want no kid coming up. I'm the youngest f here. I look like I'm fucking 14. Like, I'm not trying to hear nothing from a kid. So, I would network more, but um, I wouldn't say too much. But she would say, like, dance. Because the thing at Diddy's party is, is there's no sitting down. Everyone's so when I first decided to sit down, that's why everybody was like, what the f***? Like, who's this kid that just came in here? Nobody knows him. And he's doing what he's not supposed to do. Like, mm -hmm. everybody at a Diddy party is dancing. You turn, everybody's dancing. You got a vibe. Picking out their f for the night. And it's that type of shit. What was, I guess, the craziest thing you experienced at a Diddy party? A fight. Between the females or... The females, yeah, because would definitely be tripping over, but wouldn't be tripping over, like, didn't give a f And usually, most of the time, didn't give because we all rich. We can have any, you feel me? But there was some that was better than others, so. Just choosing. Yeah. So it's different than, like, a regular party where, like, a lot of the dudes are kind of, like, looking for the females and stuff. Nah, and females is looking for there they like who who got the bag who i'm who i'm gonna find that's gonna trick on me for real okay and did those party experiences basically kind of go the same way where like you just stay there till the end and then you bounce yeah yeah except for the one there was a fight at. i've heard all type of, i heard diddy, diddy conversations though i done heard one time jazzy was on the phone with diddy or with bow wow um because bow wow was super close and Anybody that signed to Diddy, you pretty much with Diddy for life. That was mm -hmm. something I realized over time that made me shy away from that situation. Because I'm realizing I'm signed to an artist who signed to Diddy. Like, the higher I go, no matter what, I'm going to have to go through him mm -hmm. to do something I want to do or get to a point that I want to get to. So that was when I really started to shy away from it. I had been to photo shoots where Diddy was at, um, the Billboard Awards. I went to the Billboard Awards, saved up all this money to go in Vegas, and Jazzy was performing with Diddy, and um, I couldn't even go to the award. But that's because I knew I was a conscious. I had a deeper understanding than a lot of things, and mm. I was very spiritual. And I'm straight, and the deeper I understand, I'm like, the person I'm signed to is gay. I'm not looking at it because I'm like, she's the homeboy. Right. But I'm like, she likes women, though. It's a right. woman that likes women. So that was kind of normalized around them. I couldn't talk about gay or speak. You'd feel bad if you said, like... I couldn't say nothing, like, super heterosexual. Like... That's wild. It was like... think about, like... I had to reconstruct my whole mind. Like I had to be open to that. I wasn't open to doing nothing like that, but I had to be open to people or get the industry has gained in it. And some is it gonna break their back to get further in the industry. Did and you give up their manhood? Did you see that or did you kinda get that vibe from? I just got that vibe, like that was the vibe that was set. And it was deep. Because when I went to the Billboard Awards, I couldn't go to the award show. I could go to they the after party. Win? Yeah, I went to the after party. Uh -huh. And the after party was crazy. Like, all the stars was there. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, you're seeing all these people in person. Like, Bro, it was crazy. Yeah. Kyle was there. Tiana Taylor. Everybody in the industry. But I couldn't go because it was some deeper going on at that award show 
What do you mean? Like once I got in the car with my manager at the time who went to the award show, he, we got in the Uber going to the casino and he was like, that was an award show. We literally just went to an Illuminati meeting. The Billboard? Billboard Awards. And he started laughing. And this was your man? Wait, who said that? My manager at the moment. He was like, that was an Illuminati ceremony. And he joked about it. Like, he yeah. laughed at it. I'm like, I'm not f***ing with y'all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> kind of your head up, like, yeah, like, jokingly, I'm like, nah. Like, joking, but there's, you're like, damn, there's gotta be some seriousness to it. Like, type he wants to be rich. He don't give a f what he gotta do to be rich because he's at a point in his life where it's like, do or die. I'm a young so I'm like, I have more opportunities, but he said that jokingly, like, this shit real, like, this shit not a joke. It's a joke to me, because I don't give a f but right. to me, I'm like, that shit not a joke, like, this shit real. Like, as you guys are leaving the the billboard? After party. Oh, okay, that was the after party. So, and you said they would only let you nah, go to the he party, said but not the... He said that about the Billboards Award, mm. the Billboard Awards after the after party. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not f***ing with these niggas. What was the after party like? I know you said you ran in people, but was it similar to like the Diddy parties and stuff, or was it a little different? It was at Tao. So it was at like a restaurant, a super high-end restaurant, but they had all the lights off and it was a party. Mm. Um, Chris Brown had a section. Um, Jazzy took me from my management, took me to the section. I seen everything going on. It was a term. Hella It was just, it was crazy. Did, like, did he explain what he meant by, like, uh, Illuminati meeting? Or did it, it was just, like, laughing? You were kind of like, you didn't really want to ask type shit. You kind of just let it, left it be. I said what made you say that. He said all the higher-ups were there. Um, they had signs of what to do. Um, signs of what to do, like, in the background, like? Signs of what to do, like, all of it's orchestrated type shit. Like, none of that shit's natural. So, like, the vibe is orchestrated. All the higher-ups is there. Satanic shit going on in the background. Weird shit. So, what was, what'd you decide to do from there? Were you kind of just like, I'm kind of over this or? At that point, it was deeper into being signed. So yeah, I was getting over it. I was getting over being around famous people, et cetera. I remember I had got my own crib in LA and Jazzy invited me to go to this Drake party, and I was just like, fuck it. At that point. A Drake party? Yeah, it was a Drake birthday party at Dave & Buster's. And at that point, I was just like, I was over all the famous new shit, like. Because you're like sitting there, when am I going to be signed? What, like, what, not signed. Signed. But, but like, when are, when are you going to be? I'm trying to get to that point. Right, right. Where Nays is coming to see me, like. Not even on no entitlement shit, but just on some work artist, hard shit. Yeah, like, want that. I'm not trying to be around the niggas. I'm trying to be the nigga. Like, right. that's what I'm working up to that point to be like, um, being around niggas. I'm I'm bored with that. I done met everybody. Only niggas I ain't met is Jay Z and Ye. You feel me? Mm. So, were you like? Did it seem like it was ever leading into you becoming the next, you know, Jay-Z or whoever? Or was it just like, they just kept inviting you to these parties and you were just tired of it and you're like, I gotta... Nah, it was definitely leading into that. Um, I would go to a lot of jazzy writing sessions. Mm. Where she would be with the artist, writing for the artist, Schoolboy Q. I'd have been in the studio with The Game, Madonna, everybody you think of. Metro Future, I didn't heard. I heard some of the Metro Future album before it was out. I heard. That's lit. 
hella metro shit. Um, I've been in the stool with everybody. So when you started, and when I would, go ahead, my bad. When I'd be writing, and when she would be writing, I'd be giving them bars too to say. And I remember her manager came to me one time. He was like, "Your future bright as f like you in here helping write for Madonna. You 19, 20 years old, like." The sky's the limit for you, bro. But the deeper, the more that she would bring me to sessions and people would f with me heavy, it would get, it would turn into like animosity. Mm. So deeper down the road, when she would have writing sessions, she would be like, come in here, be quiet. Like, don't say anything. Don't say shit. Like that type of vibe. And once it got to that point, I was like, yeah, fuck this shit. You were kind of over it. Yeah. Did like, did you get ever get any like weird vibes as far as like any of these industry dudes kind of doing too much or making you feel too uncomfortable with shit? Like, you get what I'm saying? I felt like they knew I was woke for real they to that get shit. The vibe. Yeah. yeah, so it would get to like some places where we'd be talking about the shit and it would get weird, but I was shutting shit down for real. Um, what do you mean like? Like I was just too woke for that shit. Like I was very spiritual, so niggas knew not to even play and take it that far. You feel me? I did hear on the phone like, what we was talking about one time, he was like, I'm scared to go to Diddy's house. He so want us to no Bow Wow said uh -oh. that. Like he want us to spend the night. So like niggas would be yeah. spending the night at his crib. Like industry niggas and who knew what was going on there. If a nigga's scared, a grown yeah. man's scared to go spend the night at Diddy's house and he got to. Bow Wow had no choice, like he You in LA. This one of the niggas that put you on. Right. It's like... Like you almost kind of... Ritual shit. Yeah. You... When you heard about, like, before the raid and everything, did... What was your opinion when the rumors started coming out about, like, what was going on? And Facts. Did you, you were looking at it, like... Because I also heard on the phone, did he talk... I mean, talking to somebody, and them saying, like, he paid people off and shit. Mm. And this is far before the, um, the rumors accusations yeah. and raids. Like, people have shit on them. So he would be... You heard through other people that he was paying people off? Just yeah. To like, yeah. Yeah. And um, he would do all man trips. Like, I ain't been to one of them, but I had an engineer and shit, and he, would, he became Diddy's engineer. And... They would do all man trips, him and Stevie J. And I have been in the room with uh, Diddy, Stevie J, and another higher up. And they would just talk about uh, this artist named Shinsia or some shit, a Caribbean artist girl. Um, Jazzy was writing for her, and we all had to get out the room because she was nervous or some shit. Mm -hmm. And they was just talking about how Diddy is, and he was laughing it off. But at the time, he seemed like on some super heterosexual shit to hide his past. He was mm. trying to erase that shit. So, I don't know. One of the like most viral moments that Diddy, you know, when he's on the phone, he's like, I'm a savage. Like, did you get that type of vibe from him at all? Or did it just like... Oh, definitely. Everybody was a yes man to him. Mm. So like, and he type niggas smack niggas over the head like my engineer would get smacked in the head if he was not but he stayed down with diddy because diddy was paying him good right. and you traveling you on private jets you doing all type of shit that you would never do right but yeah he was a very mob type nigga like mob style energy behind the music like Niggas definitely died playing with Diddy. And it's because he got so much money to pay people off, pay people to do shit, and shit like that. So, you know. Did you... Okay, so the rumors, all that's coming out. 
honestly, from my perspective, I was like, I didn't know what to believe because you hear about stuff like that all the time. You just don't know. But then the raid happens and like, oh yeah, all the, you know, both houses are getting raided. When you see that, what's your like opinion on that? He f with somebody in the higher ups that he wasn't supposed to f with. Because mm. the thing is, Didi been doing all this shit for years. Like, my opinion is he f with the wrong, wrong people, and now they coming to get him, and they probably pay people who f he f with to come out and finally do this shit. Cause all this shit happened so long ago. Well, not so long ago, cause the Meek shit is pretty recent, hmm. and like the shit with Carisha, cause I met Carisha too. But I don't know. I feel like he f with somebody he wasn't supposed to f with, and now it's over for him. I was talking to Ace Stack, cause he didn't taste this shit, hmm. and he was like, "You think it's over for Diddy?" I was like, "Yeah," and he was like, "Bro, he got too much pay," and I was like, "When you f with certain people." It don't matter what you got. They coming to get everything. Because right now they don't got shit on him. It's all but shit issues. people said. Right. You know, no proof. Just shit people said. But he's being crucified for right. what they said. What do you think about the, like, paperwork that came out? Was it Stevie J? Or who was it that came out? Some nigga that. It was a producer. Producer, yeah. um, yeah. So it wasn't Stevie J, but I think Stevie J was in He the do producers one. crazy, though. Stevie J locked in because they've been locked in for years. Stevie J had told me about the time he first went to work with Biggie. Like, Biggie? Yeah, yeah. Stevie J doesn't produce for everybody. He's been around Diddy for years, so he's seen everything. Yeah. Did you, do you think a lot of that paperwork is, is cap. real? Or cap? Yeah. Oh, no, I think it's real. Um, I even think, like, they talking about how he had hidden cameras in his crib. That shit made me nervous, because I remember being in his crib in the bathroom, like, just drunk as f like, and who knows, nigga probably had cameras in there, looking at people, yeah. sure people was f***ing in that bathroom. Right. All type crazy. of crazy shit. So when you say higher ups, like, like, you think Diddy probably just said something or did something? to the wrong person and that's when you think like the feds finally just said all right we going after him type shit i think it's like people pull strings so did he have up his daily own deal seemed like yeah he was like done working with a lot of companies a lot of people so daily on was huge like when we when i was at jazzy's crew she got free daily on all the time she signed the diddy diddy at his parties daily on was everywhere like Niggas is sick of De Leon because it didn't. Mm -hmm. So, I think that was the first step. Him switching on De Leon, saying that it was racist. Them cutting him from that contract. And then he went back to Sue. Um, a drink company or something. I think Ciroc or something. Ciroc, yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. This is all allegedly, by the way. Yeah, but when you go to play with dogs like that, niggas that run liquor companies and they're really millionaires billionaires hmm. it's a group of them so they gonna come get you when you start fucking with the higher ups and it don't matter how much money you got okay so you experience all this stuff this stuff happens what and did you move back to colorado or were you living out there permanently you kind of back and forth like what, what happened at that you? time when i first signed the jazzy i was back and forth I'd be staying with her. I had already been in LA for um, two years or mm -hmm. a year. And I got signed to Jazzy when I came back to Denver one time. Um, one of my producers was like, bro, I wanna meet the, want you to meet this nigga that could change your life. And I met him. And at the time, bro, I was really having paid. Like, I still be having paid. But like, at that time, I was having paid. And the nigga he wanted me to like meet was like on some broke nigga shit. Mm. So when I first met him, I was like, "And this was out here." This was out here, and I'm like, "You want this nigga to manage me? Like, I got more money than this nigga. Like, yeah, he don't even got a whip, but he had connections like a motherfucker." And I'm like, "I got the bread to put behind myself. Like, I just tap in with this nigga to get the connections." 
So he connected me. He started shopping me to uh, TSF first because he was tapped in with Sauce Walker and all mm. that. Sure. Sauce Walker was doing their own thing, but he was best friends with Jazzy. Tapped me in with Jazzy, played my music. She wasn't hearing it. And then finally she heard one song and she was like, I want to meet this. And I went out, met her for her birthday in Miami. And that's when all this shit started. Um, she was at Trina's crib, studio, hella niggas, Offset, Skipper the Flipper, bunch of niggas was in there. I recorded some music, they went crazy. And then that's when we locked in. Like I said, at the same time, Cardo's offering me shit. Cardo's like, I'm gonna get you in with Empire, you gonna be able to sign yourself. We working on the project at the time. I'm fighting the case here at the time. So I had to come back here. Otherwise I would've been staying in LA cause I was about to move to LA when I caught my case. Hmm. Beat the case, signed the Jazzy, did Rolling Loud, met Diddy and all them. I was signed to her for like a year. And then once shit got weird with her, like not even like she's weird, but once the situation, I started to see the ceiling on the situation. Like, cause Interscope was trying to sign me at the time I was with Jazzy, but she was like trying to gatekeep that mm. situation. Like I went to Ella May's album party and Interscope literally called me out. Like, that's how I see you are. Like, we literally got a deal on the table for him whenever y'all ready. And she whispers in her ear about some rap group she's trying to make or women. And that was when I was just like, yeah, I got to do my own shit. Like, even after all the niggas I met, all the niggas I helped write for, I was just like, yeah, I got to do this shit my way. Because if I do it in anybody else's way, it's going to be on their time. And they want all the credit for it. Right. So, you know, I dubbed that shit. And then... You don't talk to her anymore? Um, nah. After I left her crib, last time met Diddy again or kicked it with Diddy again I was just like this shit's a dub I gotta do this shit my own way tapped in with some young niggas uh, manager that had been trying to help manage me he used to manage um, the Migos and shit um, we locked in and then he died in a car crash in LA so this was some more shit that was just like discouraging I'm like, bro, I just got out of deal. I finally lock in with some niggas that believe in me heavy and not trying to gatekeep nothing. Mm. Nigga dies. And then I was independent for a year in L.A. I had stayed out there, got a new manager, shit like that. And then me and her had some disagreements and shit. And I was just like, you know what? I need a break from L.A. Like. I've been out here the last four or five years, so I just need to you take a break. You miss Denver at all, or just like a little shit about Colorado? I was definitely missing Denver, a couple of the food spots. It's like you... Being where you, I know. When you're here, you're like, oh, I just want to get out, but then you leave. I want to get back. Yeah, that's how I went. I went to New York for a little bit. I was like, oh, I love it. This is dope. Hell it. And then like, I was gone for like five, six days, and I'm like... Then you start to realize why the mountains are so dope, and like, this, just a little shit you appreciate. Knowing the streets... And Cali is so big, you could be <laughs> yeah. out there forever and never learn it. You right. feel me? So that was the thing. It was just a lot of shit like that. You know, also when I was signed, when I first got signed, I fell out with a lot of niggas. Like, there was a lot of hate, a lot of disagreements. Like with people here and shit? Yeah. And niggas felt like I was on some superhero shit. So niggas was crossing me, feeling like, yo, he's going to be good no matter what. Like, look where this nigga is at. Like, Fuck it, I'll run off with this little money. Mm. I'll do this little shit. I hate that shit so much. And that was kind of how, like, even when you get into the A-team, how shit fell all the way apart. Because at the time the A-team was coming up, I was working with Cardo. I was getting signed. And I was planning the A-team to be my little shit. Like, we gonna all come up together. Like, mm. we all got our own shit going on. And I'm going to use my connections to help y'all niggas. And everybody was kind of... Just egos and shit? Like... Everybody felt like they was the star. Right. I didn't even feel like I was the star. I just felt like, yo, together, we could be the stars. And not everybody seen that. 
that vision. Could you see like yourself dropping music with any of them anymore or like the group or? We got hella unreleased. Niggas was putting it out while I was in LA. Some of them songs, um, there was no money behind it or right. promotion planning behind it. But I honestly don't got no bad blood with niggas from the A team. Everybody's just doing their own thing now. Niggas got different beefs. Niggas don't fuck with certain niggas. But me, I still see the A team like we could, we right. could come back tomorrow and fuck the game up. Like, cause it's like everyone's still going for the most part. Like, everybody's still doing their own thing. Um, Hunter Pack still f it up. K Baby still f shit up on the videos. Um, Quan going crazy. Quan going Baby's crazy. Still going in the spring. Yeah, only nigga like. A stack moved to Texas he moved, yeah. and he kind of said F the music shit, but oh, everybody was hard. talented. I think it's just everybody needs to have the same drive for a team like that to um, be who they can. Right. Um, when I was in LA, like A team don't even know, like we was really on some shit. Like niggas from all over had knew about what we was doing. Like my niggas from the DMV was talking about us. So, like right. it was like yeah, niggas in. DMV in Detroit is talking about y'all niggas like. Oh yeah, they f with that, that video. How'd you feel about um, when that video got took down and then Savvy? How do you feel about how he's kind of? He reposted the video. Uh, no, I don't think so. But just how Savvy's kind of like developed as an artist and been basically like, if not the biggest, one of the top big, you yeah. know, artists. Not just out of Aurora, but Colorado. Like, how do you feel about the video not coming out and or not? The video getting taken down and then Savvy's, uh, I guess, continued like relevance and, you know, putting on for the city. I feel like when the video got taken down, that shit sucked. Because that was like a piece of our history. Yeah, it was going crazy, too. And that shit was doing numbers, too, like, naturally. Um, that shit was whack. I feel like the shit need to be reposted. I think Savvy reposted it, though, on his YouTube. I think. I think. I think. Uh, shit, if he did, that's good. Um... Uh, Savvy's going crazy. I feel like he's definitely bread and butter for CO. He really reps this shit. Mm -hmm. Like me, I'm on some like I represent CO, but like my sound is like I'm on a whole different type of time. Right. It, I yeah, feel you like, can't really say it's like a, a Midwest or like West Coast or like you can't attach it to one specific thing. So. Nah, but I feel like Savvy definitely. I want to see Savvy like leave. Well, not leave, but. Go network, like not right, leave forever, right, but right. he has the he yeah he's been in Colorado for so long, and like he has the power to do some shit like because he is in Colorado, but he does have fan bases in other states and may not be as large as the Colorado base, but if he went and touched down in them cities and network got features with niggas, he would apply pressure. Like some of the opportunities I had, I've only had them because I took the risk to go to those places like he would have been signed like more right. than a production deal honestly like Savvy got a lot of potential like a lot of the shows out here like you performing in front of the same people and like I was doing a lot of them shows sold out shows here opening for niggas at 18 17 like he has the opportunity to start headlining shit that's where I would like to see him go. But I feel I feel real good about what he's done. But I know him personally and I just wanna see him do more. You feel me? I wanna see him really take those next steps so he could accomplish the things he's capable of. No, that's real. That's real. All right, well, shit, man. Do you got any like final thoughts? Any last minute things you wanna speak on as far as like your career moving forward and shout out stuff like that uh no shout outs one thing i definitely would love to see the 18 come back together i want to see niggas keep pushing that line really for denver you know i want to see niggas just come together in the city and that's not something i always wanted to see like mm -hmm. once i really got in the industry shit, i was just like Fuck it. like them niggas it's crabs in a bucket and co but if niggas was able to really put their fan bases together niggas could do magical shit especially me like bro i got the whole i'm locked in with industry niggas so if niggas was to bring that talent together like we being seen by the industry you feel me shit like that um 
other than that, I'm dropping the project soon, Dior Speed, uh, single soon, Crime Rate. And just, you feel me? That's world, it. World Off Drugs, Ghost Stream, man. Oh, yeah, Ghost Stream, World Off Drugs, Spicy Talk, that type of shit. Okay, last, last question. Mm. Do you think you can make it in the industry without selling your soul? It depends how far you want to go. Mm. Uh, I feel like a lot of niggas compromise when they get to a certain um, point. And if you don't compromise, they try to stop you from getting to a certain point. Mm-hmm. Um, with today, like, there's TikTok, which it may not be up forever. But, you know, that was a fad that a lot of niggas got in the industry off of. I remember even when I was getting signed and they were shopping me to major labels, like, TikTok was one of the biggest things you had to have. Like, if you didn't have the TikTok following, niggas is not fucking with you. Like, TikTok really took over the industry. But I feel like right now, you could get in the industry a lot of ways, like, from the block or mm. four shooters only. Yeah. They got some shit going. Like, they a rs pretty much. They get niggas signed. But yeah, I feel like you could blow without compromising or selling your soul or compromising your manhood. But you Easier only get to, to a certain family. point. Yeah. Okay. Like that's something more that, underground famous, but you, you can't. Yeah, like, underground yeah. famous. You can do tours and shit, but you'll never be able to sell out arenas unless you compromise something. Mm, that's a good point. I even like. On a smaller scale, mm. Maha Minute wouldn't be where it's at if I don't post the clickbait. Yeah. You know? like I There's almost... sometimes you have to compromise. That's, yeah. that's like even with the shit, with the situation with me and Sam. Yeah. I couldn't really be mad oh, yeah, at you. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I, couldn't really, <laughs> I couldn't really be mad at you because it was like, one, he asked you to post it, and two, the shit went up. Yeah. Well, he paid me too. Yeah, he paid you. Yeah. Asked you to post it and the shit went up. And there's a lot of shows like that where I canceled and they gave it to certain niggas. Because mm-hmm. when I was in L.A., I was like, I'm not coming back to Denver to do a show unless it's sold out. Makes sense. I'm part of the headline and I'm getting paid. Right. So a lot, I turned down like probably five to ten shows that were just given away. Like yeah. Honey Pack would get the slot or somebody else would get the slot. And that was just one of them moments like. Uh, I wanted to do the show for free. Yeah. But at that time, my management really had control of everything I'm doing. So Sam hit me up. He like, bro, come do this show. It's going to be sold out. It's going to be the return to the city. It's going to go crazy. I'm like, oh, it's up. I'm doing it. I'm in LA. I'm not doing shit, but helping Zazi write for these huge ass niggas, whatever. It's going to be crazy. I'm turned right now. And, um, once my manager heard, he was like, nigga, you're going to do a show for free? Nigga, you're writing for Madonna and fucking Lotto, Coy Leray, fucking Schoolboy Q, Future, Metro, and you're finna go do a show in the city for free at the Cervantes. Like, do you not see where you're going? I'm like, I don't give a fuck about none of that. Like, it's for the city. I do this shit for the city. That's real. And he's like, Nah, somebody got to pay for my flight, somebody got to pay for your flight, and somebody got to pay you to perform. Without those three things, show's canceled. Hit Sam up, I'm like, bro, I got to cancel. He's like, bro, you just told me you're doing the show. Sam actually got hot. He started yeah. arguing with my manager. He's I mean. like, <laughs> I need to manage Ox. This nigga yeah. ain't doing no shows, dropping no music, and he's lit right now. I need to manage this nigga. I'm like, bro, you're a cameraman bro like stay in your place and realistically sam came the fuck up and like oh, he, me and crazy, me and him been in talks there. like he's trying to help yeah. me get signed the interscope a lot of other shit like he's trying to help with the management side right now lock in that's my boy yeah. but we definitely fell out after that <laughs> for a long time i'm glad you explained your side from my perspective with that, usually I don't even be liking to post shit like that because yeah. people have tried to po- pay me to post chain snatch, like different reels, like street shit. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. I won't even take your money because then I have to look on my shoulders. 
But yeah. with that situation, I feel like me and you would always kind of like, I would try and put you on a list or like a bracket or something. Yeah. And you would like, you would pop your shit. And at that time, yeah, I was more, <laughs> I was more sensitive to shit because like, that's when I first started. I would pop my shit because yeah. the cop was like, yo, I, I was yeah. like, damn. But I would get more sensitive to that shit at that time because I'm like, damn, I'm just trying to promote you. I'm trying to look out for you. And you get like kind of irritated with me. So I'm like, all right, it. So mm -hmm. when Sam hits me, yeah. he's like, I'm finna pay for this post. You gotta put Ox. He tried to make it look worse. I didn't even go. I know he, he did. It, he probably already Cause told Because once me. he put me on the show, yeah. the shit went up. Like yeah. niggas was super turned that I was coming back to the city. So it was like, damn. I got all these niggas excited for Ox to come back and he just cancels yeah. on me out of nowhere. Yeah. And his manager's talking shit. And that's yeah. a bunch of bullshit. And once he paid, and at that time, I just started really kind of making money in Mohammed. So he pays me. I'm like, all right, it's not nothing, no street series shit. So I'm like, whatever. Ox don't like me anyway, so. F yeah, oh, God. <laughs> and, then, and then we, oh God. you know, we chopped it up after. But, like, yeah. oh, no, nah, that shit was funny. That shit. And now looking back, y'all are cool. Yeah, I that's seen my him. dog. I think he did a video for you or something. Yeah, that shit was crazy. I think I posted something. Yeah, I can't Ephesians. But, that shit was crazy. But, we backed out the Rolls Royce, all that. Yeah. It was in LA. Shit was hella turn. <coughs> but yeah, that's. That, I'm glad you brought that up because I almost forgot about that shit. Yeah. But yeah, man. I think that wraps up. I think we touched everything. For sure, uh, for sure. I appreciate you for coming on the show. Definitely. Appreciate you. Some wild ass stories and shit, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's like they're deep, but they're not too deep for I'm like, fuck, I don't know the yeah, controversy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, but, even when I was saying that, I was like, damn, this could be the shit that could be fucked up an issue. But then I was like, <laughs> nah, like I ain't go that deep. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's no one can really get in trouble because you didn't really say nothing crazy, crazy. But anyways, huh. uh, make sure y'all go follow Ox Duo and everything. Everything. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all that, man. Links will be in the description. Make sure y'all follow my high me on everything, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all that. Hit that like button, comment down below your favorite Ox Dior song in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button to stay notified when all the latest news drop. Shout out Where's Dank Studios, you know what I'm saying? Hottest studio in the city. If you need some studio time, engineering time, make sure y'all tap in. Shout out my boy Primo Cuz. Um, I think that's just about wraps it up, man. Mile High Minute, number one blog in the universe. We out. <laughs>